It snowed, for real. You know what that means? It's time to get a lowrider together. Something that's not very good in the snow. Doesn't like icy roads and bad weather conditions. Let's get this thing ready. It ain't finishing itself. I got three days off between now and when I need to go to my folks' house for Thanksgiving. I say we try and get this thing a little farther along. Hope you guys dig it. All right, here we go. This is a year and a half of dust coming off. Oh, that's nice. Hey, there's a white truck under here. Look at that. This is one of the things that I am the most proud of. I love this truck. I love the style of it. I love how clean it is. I have really not pushed to work on it for so long just because because I wanted to make sure I was doing it justice. This thing's a keeper, so. I don't want to do a bunch of junk to it that I want to redo, you know what I mean? Time to make some room. I would like to get this thing on the lift, but I kind of think we can just get the bag mounts on the back of this thing where it's at. What was this? Oh, this was back when I List from back when I narrowed the rear axle. I wonder how that's gonna work out. I think I'm gonna work on it right where it's at. I get the bed moved out of the way enough to where I can kinda get back here and work comfortably. I think what the plan right now is, is to remove this cross member. This was a temporary one that I had put in. And that'll kind of allow me to uh, see what kind of space I really have to work with. Basically, I need to get an airbag in here and a cross member system that is good enough to support the airbags And then it also needs to go over here and support the gas tank because the gas tank Mount got taken out when I back half to this frame So let's get in here and Ditch these straps cut this bracket out and see if we have a decent spot to start Oh yeah, that moved a bunch. Whew. There was some pressure on that. Might as well clean those up so I don't cut myself on the tax. Getting a little less complicated looking. We got our ABS line here, we got brake proportioning valve here, we got a charcoal canister going on. Originally it was like right up under the bed and it'll still do that, but I think it'll be better off if I can like route the lines nice and away from the airbags and shocks. So let's get that stuff out of the way and cleaned up. That's the evap canister. We'll get it out of the way for now. Got all that stuff out of the way. Now it's time to cut the uh, brackets off that held those uh, brake line fittings and stuff like that. So get the grinder out and we'll bust that off of there. We'll keep it simple and just use a cutoff wheel and a flap disc. I think that's enough noise for the night. Progress is being made. Grinding dust everywhere. That's good, right? That wasn't a super productive day, but we're getting things done. So uh, I'm at a good stopping point. I got the axle all cleaned off. 
things out of the way. Now I got a clean spot to start building bag mounts and shock mounts and all those things. So I'm going to clean up this mess and be back here in the morning. That car is cool. Uh, we're not working on that though. We're working on the Nissan. It's also cool. Check this out. I got the tabs all cut off the axle last night and been kind of messing around with some airbags, trying to figure out where I want those to go. On this setup, I'm going to just go bag right on the axle and keep it simple. I'm not gonna try and do like a, like a cantilever lift bar or anything like that. So this is gonna be a pretty simple one. I'm gonna try to get it to where the bags are like directly over the axle, but I've got this gas tank uh, bracket that's gonna be kind of living in the same zone. So we will figure out how to make it all work. I think it's gonna be fine right there. It shouldn't whack the gas tank. If it does, we'll deal with that when we have to deal with that. But check this out. I've got this set of axle brackets are from, that are from the uh, Barnes four-wheel drive kit from when I did the rear suspension on the Jeep. So basically what I'm gonna do is come in here and retrim this so that it fits that axle better. And then these will sit right down there on the axle tube. I'll drill two more holes so that I can get to the uh, bolts on the bag and then we should be pretty good to go like this should be a pretty much a slam dunk for the lower mount piece of cake check that out let's go see if that sort of fits the axle even before i grind it these things always take a little bit of sanding to get all perfect but you can at least see how close we are that's gonna be good. That fits nice and tight. I'll probably even be able to rosette weld the center of it. All right, let's go trim up the other one to match this, sand them, and then we'll start on the next process. It's pretty close to the axle tube, so I have to use this short little Allen head bolt. One of the other tricks I usually do on that type of setup when there's really very little space is I'll use header bolts because they always have a really small head on them. So we're getting that kind of sorted out right now. And now I think we can figure out what we got to do for cross members in order to get our height right and give us clearance for the bags. Now's the part where we get to do creative mini trucker stuff. In my head, the first option is straight bar across the back, bent bar in the front, plate for the airbag to go in that zone. And then where the straight bar is here, then shoot a tube that goes up and grabs that front cross member. That'll allow me to have spots for shocks, either front or back. And it'll allow, allow me to have that deal there and bag mounts and all that stuff will be in good spots. So I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, I could get kind of tricky. You see a bunch of mini truck guys that like, whew, have just like tubing everywhere. That's not my style. I'm gonna keep it kind of simple and simple and hopefully just to the point and strong. So I think I'll start by shooting a straight tube across from one side to the other. It's like right there. Okay, that should be perfect. All right, that first cross member is sort of tacked in place. I've got the bag resting where it's gonna live. It's obviously gonna be squished all the way down. The bag, when it's compressed all the way, is three inches tall. Basically, that means that when I weld the top plate in that's going to be the bag mount, it can be about one inch below the top of this tube. All right, let's get this in place so that it doesn't move around on us. If 
feel like I'm finally kind of ripping the band-aid off and getting back to being busy on this thing. That feels good. I was kind of psyching myself out. I was kind of psyching myself out for way too long about like what had to be perfect and design and all that and I needed to just get out here and get busy. All right, let's start figuring out the bent tubes. So those look good and then we'll keep working forward from there. All right, I got a chunk inch and three quarter 120 wall in the rug fab bender. We're gonna go ahead and bend almost a 90, probably like a 75. Here's our first bend. The other one I'm doing right now on the other end of the tube. We're gonna get it right to 75. So we're gonna match this perfect. Right there. What we're looking for is a way to get this tube in here to where it gives us enough room for the airbag, but it also clears this uh, upper link bracket. If we go this way, that's actually kind of the look we're going for. I just will probably bring it to where the radius is a little closer there. And it should all kind of live happy together there. Cool. All right, I'm gonna start chopping these up. I got the truck jacked up a little bit so that I can get a straight edge across without it hitting that. So we will get those tacked up in place. So this is gonna live here. This is gonna sit flush here. Cool. That looks good. That looks good. What's up? We have the cross member in place. We've got lower mounts kind of sorted out. Those are getting there. Now we just got to make this upper plate. So I'm going to grab some cardboard. We'll do a cardboard template of this shape. I'll have it like rest just a little bit above center line. We'll get this all made out of steel, get our uh, spacing right, and then we should have bag mounts here pretty soon. All right, we got some cardboard. I set it up in there, kind of sketched, uh, kind of sketched a loose shape of what this thing's supposed to look like. I don't even know if I have any plate. I guess I probably should have checked that before I get all froggy on this project. I'm kind of like having a plate shortage because of all the work that we did on Louis Vuitton. The goal here is for this thing to go in from either the bottom or the top, wherever it fits, so that I'm about three quarters of an inch down. And it looks like, it looks like it'll end up being from the top. What do we got? What do we got? What do we have? All right, I got to move a bunch of junk out of the way. I found this. We had started, ow! We had started chopping it up, making parts for Louis Vuitton. And I think it's just big enough. I think it's just big enough to fit this, fit this on there. Yep, we're gonna use that. That'll be a good thickness for the plate. It's not super duper thick. That way the airbag fitting and stuff is all happy. We'll get this one over there. And boom, I got a spot. I got enough for two of them. All right, let's get to cutting. All 
All right, I got a couple of quick measurements off of the plate to the bag to the frame. And now I'm drilling out, drilling out the first bag plate to start getting those holes for the bolts and the holes for the fittings in place. Go back over here and we will take this plate and we'll put it right over the top of that plate. So that's our template for transferring the punch marks. I got the plates tacked in. I got them dropped down the right amount. Basically, I laid that piece of angle iron across there and I just used lug nuts to space between the angle iron and drop the plates down. That got them to where they're like totally square and they're the same distance off of the top of the frame on either side. So I think it's time to bust out some welding and get these things in place all the way. Oh, come on. All right, a couple little bobbles here and there, but all in all, I think that's a pretty good job. Sweet. I say sweet too much. Whatever, this one's totally sweet. Hey, it's the next day. That was a late night of getting stuff done. Bag mounts are in, that's pretty cool. I just wanted to show you this little trick that I'm doing for the lower bag mount. Basically, I had this plate here and in order to make sure that the plate is in the same spot as the upper mount, I'm just using all thread with some nuts to locate it. And then I've got my angle finder found level on the frame and then a mountain level there. That way at right height, this bag is like in perfect position. It'll be a little bit screwed up when it's all the way compressed and a little screwed up when it's all the way extended, but right there where it rides the most, it's gonna be perfect uh, in the perfect spot. So I'm gonna do the same over here and we'll tack those lowers in. out of here and uh, put some bags in place. All right, we got our bags. I went and picked up some fittings at the hardware store. I didn't have the uh, half to quarter reducer bushings. I did have compression fittings and I had quarter inch brake line, air brake line, and a T with a Schrader. So we should be able to bolt these in and see if these things will air this truck up and down. Let's see if we can get these things in there without jacking the truck up more. I'm going to have to jack the truck up more. Hang on. Stoked. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. I've had this truck for a while now. I think I've had this thing going on two years, almost two years. So to finally like be making some progress in the right direction is pretty cool. Your fittings I'm using on this are air brake line fittings for like a truck with air brakes, like a big rig or something. That's what the, the fittings are all DOT air brake line fittings. And then the airline itself is just quarter inch. I call it Senflex, quarter inch air brake line. So these have a, a nut and a ferrule and then they have an inside tube. You basically get everything all in there and snug them up because we're not driving it around the block. We're just checking to see if this thing airs up and down. Let's do it. Let's do that, air it up. It's like the best part of these jobs. All right, we'll start by airing it up and seeing how high it lifts and see if it lifts enough to where I can get the jack out. Yep, that's cool. These bags, they compress to three inches and they extend to 12. 
So if you set these bags up right, you can get nine inches of travel out of these things. That's really good. When I was first doing mini trucks and getting into airbags, we were airbagging stuff and getting like four and a half inches of lift and uh, totally okay with that. I know the notch and all that was capable because I used to have it sitting flat on the ground, but I'm curious if I got my math right to where these, uh, these bags are just about compressed to three. I think they're gonna be closer to like three and a half when this thing's all the way down. Let's see if it hits the ground. There it is. Cab is on the ground. Cool. Bags are compressed about as far as they need to be. Cab is on the ground. One other thing that I did want to do on this was make sure that, that the, uh, the back had just a little bit extra left in it so that if I aired up the front, I could actually drag the back and it didn't just lift it off the ground. So let's see if I lift the front a little bit, if the back stays down. Another reason for doing that is if I ended up wanting to throw a little bigger tire on the back of this thing. These bags are super stiff too. So with the weight of the bed on it. Yeah, I think we're good. It's hitting the ground there. All right, that was a good couple of days of work on the Nissan. I'm stoked to be back hustling on this thing again. There's a ton to do still, but we're making moves. That's all you can do, right? I'll get back in the shop here in a few days. We'll continue working on this, and we got to see this bed go on the truck. This thing is going to be awesome when it's tucking rim in the back. I can't wait. All right, we'll see you guys in a few days.